Keith Vats, his life isn't going quite so swimmingly. Um, clearly, he's had to quit this job chairing the Home Affairs Committee. There are calls from people to say he should stand down as an MP. First of all, do you think that is a valid thing to be considered right now? And secondly, who should be running the Home Affairs Committee, a very important committee? Mm. Uh, the answer to the first question is no. Um, he did a fine job as the Home Affairs Select Committee chair. I sit on it as well. Um, it produced over 100 reports during his time, took evidence from 1,300-odd witnesses and had a real influence on the national debate. But I think he did do the thing, the right thing in standing down Why? by Parliament and particularly by those who serve us. Because what we didn't want and what he didn't want on the committee was for him to become the subject and the issue when we're debating very important issues. For example, um, female genital mutilation. We have a high prevalence of that in my borough in Lambeth. We're about to produce a report on that. Um, now, it would be a great shame if everything around that FGM report was dominated by the, the Keith Fair story. So that's in part why he decided to stand down. And we've got an incredibly important ongoing stream of work. We had the new immigration minister in front of us yesterday in the evidence session that we did. And he said that in so far as the government's concerned, and I've been on this program and talked about immigration many times before, but the Home Office will be in the lead in setting the terms of our immigration okay. relationship well, you, with but, Europe going forward. Wonder, and we, so we've got really important work going I'm on absolutely there. Absolutely right. And I wonder whether all of those things didn't go through his mind before he did what he is alleged to have done. Well, no doubt. Um, Many different things would have gone through his mind, but he's taking legal advice on the allegations that have been made in the Sunday Mirror and that have appeared in other newspapers. But if you're since. in a high-profile position where you are scrutinising law, yeah. you are paid as an MP from the public purse, do you not think it should go through your mind that the things you do in your life need to be things which are going to stand up under public scrutiny? Um, that is the case for every single MP and everything that we do. Um, when you get up in the House of Commons, you have to make declarations of interests if you're going to speak on something where you've got a personal interest. Mm. And that's absolutely right. And in fairness to so Keith, actually, Susanna... So it does not call well, into question his judgment as a politician and therefore as an MP if he couldn't work that out before he did it? Well, in fairness to him, the reason why he has resigned from the committee is for the reason that you cite. Um, uh, of course, we should all exercise the best judgment at all times. Um, but as you can see from the papers, uh, not just in relation to Keith, but all the different things that MPs often reported on, um, MPs, I suppose, are human beings and are not perfect. But it's a perfectly valid point you make. I'm not disagreeing with it it's at all. It's too much. I mean, you, you yourself backed out of the Labour leadership campaign, mm. which many people now wish you hadn't because mm. of the mess the party's found itself in. But you did it because from what I understood, that you found for you and your family the heat of putting mm. yourself above that parapet mm. was just unbearable. Mm. Is there too much scrutiny of the private lives of politicians? Should we back off a bit? Is the media mm. too culpable in going after mm. this? Or does the public who pay the salaries mm. of these people, of you guys, yeah. have an absolute right to know if there is any suggestion of impropriety, hypocrisy, whatever it may be? Well, I do think they have the right to know about impropriety and hypocrisy, particularly if you're breaking the law mm. um, or you're going out and making an argument for something and then doing the opposite. What about if you're just behaving in a way that some people don't like, like Keith Vaz? He doesn't yeah. seem to have broken the law. That's right. But people look at him and think, well, you shouldn't have been behaving in that manner. That's more of a moral judgment. Should, yeah. should MPs, do you think, be susceptible to a well, higher no. level of morality? I think as public figures, whether you're an MP or the presenter of Good Morning Britain, you, you know, you're a public figure and you go into the job knowing that. And for me, I mean, for example, the Labour leadership, it wasn't really an issue with me getting the attention. Um, it was partly an issue in my family, but also I hadn't been preparing to go into leadership contest. I was preparing to become a cabinet minister. And unfortunately, as you can see, Labour isn't in government at the moment. Um, but I do think there is a genuine issue. I think what worries me actually most is uh, for future generations, because they're growing up online. They put everything on Facebook, etc., mm. and all the idiotic, silly things that you often do in your younger years. And they are always going to be at risk of silly mm. things which are forgotten for everyone else coming out later if they become mm. a public figure. And then you'll end up with a kind of very sanitised, yeah. not normal people in Parliament, um, which is a problem. So there's always going to be this balance between... Or perhaps that will make us all more tolerant. Well, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But nevertheless, I mean, look, in spite of... When, when you see stuff 
as you've seen over the last few days in the papers, the first people you think about are, oh, my God, you know, what are their family yeah, going absolutely through? Absolutely right. But on the other hand, it's a tremendous privilege to do what we do. Right. I love what I do every day. People generally should be held to a reasonable standard of behaviour. If we're setting the laws, then certainly there should be no conflict of interest when we do that. That's uh, unacceptable if it's clear that for some reason or other we're engaged with something which would persuade us to, to vote in one way. That's wrong. You're meant to declare that.